Line art is step one in producing a visual product that can be consumed by a reader. Now this is a huge amount of information, there's no way I could spew it out in one video, but I do have a few tips that will make any comic look a little bit more polished. Hey, Walter here, and in this How to Make Comics video, we're going to be talking about line art. I'll be covering pencils and inks and also some compositional things that probably should have gone in the page layout and thumbnailing video. So if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure you go check it out. Now, before we start, I have an ask of you. What types of videos do you like to see from me? Do you like these technical videos or would you like more vlog style videos? And do you like the animation stuff or are the still images good enough? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much. Now let's get started. Knowledge bit number one, how thick should the lines be? Now this is gonna be one of those it depends answers and it's gonna depend a lot on the, your style, what tools you're using, etc. So I can't really answer that question, but I can give you a quick way to figure out a good starting point. Now this will work a lot easier if you're working digitally. You could probably still figure it out if you're working traditional, but I would suggest just getting a free drawing program like Krita or GIMP and just Google it, you'll be able to find them and using that to figure out how thick your line should be. All right, so this is what you do. Open up your page template. Uh, it's gonna depend on what size you use. Make sure you check out my page setup video to figure out exactly all the things I'm talking about here. But we're gonna say we're using a traditional 11 inch by 17 inch canvas for our comics, traditional US size. Now, the next thing you want to do is go find a page from your favorite artist, whoever that is, copy that image, paste it into your 11 by 17. Now, increase the size of that page so it fits perfectly inside of your canvas. Now, you have a representation of how thick those lines are from your favorite artist. Now, get out your stylus and start drawing lines next to the artist's lines. Keep changing the width until you find one that matches those lines and there you go. That's where you want to start and see how you feel about the line width. You also want to pay attention to the lines width that the artist used for the outside and the inside, also foreground elements and background elements because you're going to want to use those things which brings us to the next knowledge bit. Knowledge bit number two, what do you know about them line weights? Line weights are basically how thick a line is. The thicker the line, the heavier the line. Now there's a general rule that the most important object should have a thicker line weight. Objects that are closer to the camera will have a thicker line weight than objects in the background. And the outside of objects tend to have a thicker line than the inside object of the object, but this isn't a hard fast rule. You might want to change it up for some reason. Like there's maybe there's something in the background that needs to get the attention of the reader. So that will have a thick line weight, or maybe there's a feature on the character that needs to draw focus. Like maybe their eyes. Uh, it's just really important to think about the line weights and how they affect the readability of the whole page. Like you wouldn't want to have unimportant objects having a heavy line weight and you wouldn't want to use the same line weight for the entire image unless you're gonna use something like composition or color to help draw the focus. Knowledge bit number three, composition. Now this probably should have gone under the page layout and thumbnailing video. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. So composition is this huge subject. It's got so much information, but here are a few tips that will hopefully make any image a little bit more appealing. Now the first compositional rule you can use is the rule of thirds. This is basically dividing up your canvas into nine boxes, three columns, three rows. Each of those intersection points is a visual focus point for your viewer. So anything you put on those points will draw the attention of your viewer. And also weird things start to happen if you put the object below it, above it, to the left, to the right of it. So pay attention to those things and see what different things will do to the image. This is similar to the golden ratio, which is basically this weird spirally snail design. So you want to put your important object right there in the center of the spiral. And then you can take the rest of the swirl and put other visual elements along that and it creates a nice visual flow for the viewer of the image. Now you'll notice with these that everything is putting the important objects off center. Now a center image does have its purposes. It's great for like epic cover shots or heroic things. Um, but for a sequential page, you don't want to just put everything dead center all the time. You want to create this counterbalanced asymmetrical composition and it makes things a little bit more interesting for the reader. It also can give you room for your lettering. Other ways to start off your composition are by using everyday shapes. Like you can use an L or a diamond or a square or a circle or a triangle. 
All of these are balanced images that can help create a nice flow for your image. Uh, my buddy Hoyt Silva, who's an amazing artist and also creator of a Webtoon comic called Last Stop, always offers this little bit of advice, which is use the letters from the English alphabet to start off your composition because they are all well balanced and create a nice flowing shape. Knowledge bit number four, make your pages and panels interesting. Now the best way to do this is to vary the camera distance, height, angle, relationship to the object that's in frame. If we take a look at this page, notice all the characters are roughly taking up the same amount of space. You see the same amount of them in all the panels. They're all mid-shots. Mid-shot is a film term where you basically see the head and the chest of the character. There's other like film terms like far, wide, close-up, extreme close-up, probably more. But regardless, uh, they're all the same. And you'll notice too that the camera is kind of in a straightforward position aimed at the two characters. Now, if we look at a page with the exact same story, but with much different camera shots, it's a little bit more interesting. Also, the distances and the angles can help sell different emotions. Like if someone's sad and the camera is looking down at them, it can help make the character feel smaller and weaker. It can help with the sadness. Also, like an up angle can make a character feel massive and powerful. Behind a character can give a sense of dread. Moving closer to the character can help amplify that expression. So different size panels and also the amount of panels can affect reading. Generally, large panels slow down reading and smaller multiple panels can speed it up. Generally speaking, I mean, you could also use small panels to help slow things down if you use them in a certain way. Knowledge bit number five, be confident in your line. Having sketchy lines is great for, well, sketching, but when you're ready to produce final art, you have to decide on your final lines. Now, of course, stylistically anything goes. I mean, I have a sketchy and rough style, but if you were to look at an image with like a multitude of overlapping, haphazardly placed short lines just all over the page, like that is so much visual noise that is being sent to the viewer that they might not be able to interpret it. Now, of course, I'm not gonna tell anybody what to do stylistically. If this is something you wanna try, go for it. It could be super awesome. But just remember that the viewer might be interpreting those lines different than you want them to. There's some basics of line art. Of course, there's tons more information out there. So if there's something that you would like me to cover that I didn't, please let me know in the comments. And if you would like to support me, check out my Patreon or my online store to get some of my books or commissions, or you can check out my t-shirt store and get some of my t-shirt designs. Also, be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.